Joining us now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, may I agree, turning to the UFC Octagon coming up on May the 14th in Brazil. It is Rob Fonsgree taking on John Lineker. Rob, as always, appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, obviously, uh, first time we had a chance to talk to since this fight was booked. So uh, I, I got to ask you, I, I know a lot of fans online have been, when this fight was announced, they were like, man, can't wait for this fight. When you get the, the call to say, all right, the proposed opponent is John Lineker, what goes through your mind? Um, to be honest, at first, I was like, of course, you know, I want that fight. That's a huge fight. That's an exciting fight. But then I thought about the flight. I was like, oh, it's going to be a long flight. So I was a little like, ah. And I was going to like, I went back to my manager asking if we could maybe uh, do it uh, on that uh, May 29th card in Vegas, the mm-hmm. one uh, Almeida and Garbrandt so headlining. So, but then after that, they, they came back and said, listen, that card's filled. I mean, full. Really can't do it. I was like, all right, let's get it. You know, I'm, I have no problem going to Brazil. Um, it's a huge card. It's, you know, it's a, it's a who's who's or who's on that card. It's ridiculous. So, you know, after I got over the flight, I was, I was super excited, super stoked. And I can't wait to go out there, you know, put on the show. Is this the longest flight you're ever going to take? Um, no, I, um, I've um i been to Malaysia. I've been to, um, you know, other countries. So it's not that bad, but I, I was young then. So it wasn't can't really remember how long I had it felt, but uh, it's you know it's, it's gonna be a lot of traveling. So, but I, I don't think it's gonna affect my uh performance. I just hate staying in one spot for so long. Yeah, I mean when you're when you're on a flight that long, I, I've got to imagine they probably have you go to Miami and then Miami, uh, you know, down to Brazil. It, does that alter? You know, it, does it alter your diet? I mean, do you have to change things up? The you know, you know, leading up to the fight because of knowing the fact of hey, you're going to be on a flight for a long time. Um, and in terms of nutrition on the flight, probably not the best nutrition you can possibly have. Well, yeah. So um, I'm definitely going to pack my uh, my veggies. Um, so I'm probably going to have a bigger meal before I leave, and then um, you know, pack uh, some snacks. It's pretty much is going to be broccoli, you know, spinach, cucumber, stuff like that, and bring it on with me. Um, and then you know, obviously water. So I don't think the nutrition is going to be a, a huge part. I think it's just going to be more of just kind of going stir crazy on the plane. And, of course, this fight's going to be a part of the preliminary card of UFC 198. Of course, we all know uh, the main event heavyweight title on the line for Brice Everdoon, defending the heavyweight title against Stipe Miocic. Of course, uh, obviously, you've done extremely well here in the UFC since entering the promotion. You know, John is back at 135 pounds. And when people think of the name John Lineker, they think of the explosive strikes that he has. Do you look at him? Obviously, he's a striker, but do you kind of look at, look at his striking style in a certain way? Yeah, um, he's a guy, you know, like, uh, anytime he can finish a fight. Um, he's an exciting fighter. He brings the fight. He loves to just stand in there and go at it. Um, I definitely won't get into one of those type of fights with him like Francisco did on, on his last one. But um, he definitely has big power, but he, he's, he's definitely wide open for a lot of shots. I just got to time it right, um, bring him bring him into my fight, and um, really just control the distance and the, the pace the whole time. And I feel like, it should it should be I don't want to say easy fight, but the, it should be the game plan is easy. It's just going to be up to me to kind of uh, capitalize on the mistakes he makes. You know, John. Obviously, everyone well documented the, the problems he have going to one twenty five. But coming to one thirty five, people are like, "Well, does he have?" You know, you look at him; he, he's a sh- shorter guy. I believe you're going to have six inches just in the height on him. It, does that make any difference in terms of preparation for a fight when you're fighting a shorter fighter? It does. Um, you definitely got to bring in shorter guys. Uh, uh, you know, you got to um, worry about him, him getting underneath you as far as takedowns because he will have a lower uh, base of gravity and all that. Uh, and, um, you know, I feel like with a short guy like that, it's kind of easy to hit the top of the head. So uh, I've got to be a little more accurate with my shots, to, you know, not really damage uh, my hands or whatnot. But, um, but besides that, uh, you know, I feel like this fight's real basic as far as what I have to do. Uh, we definitely brought in a lot of shorter guys, but uh, I uh, I feel like he he's like real short though, so it was kind of it was kind of hard, you know. Yeah, I mean he he's uh, five foot three. Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm sitting there like we actually had we fought we found a guy that's five four, just to kind of we can't I really couldn't spar with him because he was you know he's not on the 
he's kind of one of the regular students, but I got to move around and kind of fill him out and see what it would be to, um, you know, move around a guy that's five three. But uh, I think the shortest guy that we have sparring right now is five six, so uh, definitely not five three. But uh, <laughs> we're working on it. You know, we always hear about when one fighter has a reach advantage, and for you, you've got a four-inch reach advantage in this fight. They always talk about the advantages. I, I think we go back, uh, you know, anytime John Jones fights, a perfect example, or even with Bellator this past weekend with, with Andre Koreshkov and Benson Henderson, that was the analogy of the fight. But are there any disadvantages to when you have that reach advantage? I mean, is there something that you say, yeah, I've got this reach advantage, but I still have to watch out for this or watch out for that or, or make sure I don't do this or that? Yeah, definitely. Um, guys that have a reach advantage uh, over a shorter opponents usually tend to pull out uh, with the chin higher. Um, you know, I fought a lot of tall guys. My my debut, I fought George Group, and we're we're planning on that. So I know I know I actually know exactly how to beat a taller guy. I just got to reverse the role and never really make any mistakes. Guys that are taller and have reach usually come out fast. Well, I'm sorry, the punches come out fast, but they come back slower, and. Uh, pull out with the chin high and um, really just leave their body open for body shots. And, you know, Lineker is great with body shots. Lineker is great with timing, uh, you know, with his right hand over the jab. So I just got to make sure I, I never really pull out tall for that left hook, uh, bring back my jab as quick as, as quick as I throw it back out for that right hand. And uh, every time he shoots to the body, I just got to counter with something big at, um, after he shoots to the body. But uh, I feel like that's going to be the main Part with him is making sure I, uh, I'm, on, I'm, you know, I'm real sharp and I never really get lazy with him because I know how, you know, like for him to let let one of those big punches go is it's real, it's, it's real uh, quick for him because he's so short, short, stock, um, so short and stocky. So it's just it's nothing for him to let go of a couple punches. Uh, but besides that, I, I think I really do. I think it's a simple game plan. I just gotta really execute it and show the distance with my, uh, and I say with my reach, but more with my footwork. How much of training for a fight like this, where you know you have a fire that he wants to get into that firefight, is merely in training? Uh, you know, having your your teammates and your sparring partners trying to, you know, kind of, I don't know if the term is kind of, you know, reckless abandonment of just, you know, trying to get you into that brawl of making sure that, you know, maybe is the biggest key in this fight just being smart. Yeah, I think it's going to be being smart, um, having no ego in this fight at all, um, and. Uh, taking advantage of every opportunity that presents because I feel like he's, he's definitely wide open for a big shot that ended fast for me. I just got to jump on it and see it. Um, but yeah, it, it was kind of a, it was kind of annoying almost like it was, I had everybody just kind of go crazy on me the whole time. You know, we, um, you know, see on, they have a lot of, we have a lot of real technical strikers there. So mm -hmm. if I'm just kind of go crazy and just do whatever. It's kind of like, all right, man, let's stop doing this. But it's kind of like, you know, that's exactly what my opponent potentially could do. But I um but I also been working a lot of wrestling for this guy. I feel like you know, he's so short that he you know, and he is Brazilian, so I know he's working a lot of great Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys. So I'm uh, I'm prepared for that. And I'm thinking everybody keeps talking about the striking, but I'm I think I was a little more worried not worried, but uh prepared for his uh, wrestling and, and jiu jitsu as well. you mentioned about don't let the ego get to you. Can can for a fighter, can the ego be the worst attribute to have as a fighter going into a fight? Definitely. Um, you saw the, like, the last fight at 35. Oh, his first fight at 35 was Francis Rivera. Uh, he went out there, he was moving, moving around for a couple of seconds, and then just got hit with one shot, and that was it. He was just like, all right, you know what? Let's do this. And then he went at it, and a guy that's like 5'3", and it's, you know, that short and compact, it could be a short night for you. And, and when you do get into a uh, firefight like that, it's kind of it's fifty fifty. It's who gets there first, and usually the shorter, stockier guy does. Did you, in preparations for this fight, have you learned more about your about your opponent John Lineker in his fight against Francisco Rivera, or maybe maybe it's going back to you know his losses either against Luis Gadno or Ali Bogatinov? Did you maybe learn more from his defeats as opposed to his, his victories he's had in the UFC? Um, not really. I watched that fight a couple of times, but I, I can't really, I couldn't really get much off of it. I, uh, the fight I didn't mainly watch the most was that Ian McCall fight, mm -hmm. um, his last one at 25. And, uh, they're trying to pick up on a little, little bit of, um, you know, uh, things that he does all the time. And there's not much, it's kind of, a 
like I say, he's just kind of a wild kid, and he just goes out there and just throws the flow and uh, tries to draw you into a, a brawl. But, um, I, you know, we, we, find, we, we find a couple little things here and there, but sometimes it's kind of like you just got to go with the flow and just adapt and react to the situation. I know that, you know, in preparation for the fight, they always talk about watching your opponent, you know, trying to, to find some telltale signs. Maybe there's a, a certain combination they like to throw or they throw it in a certain way. But how much uh, of preparations for every fight for you is also going back and observing yourself and going back and, and looking at your past couple of fights and, and maybe almost trying to see if, if you're given some telltale signs? Yeah, uh, definitely. That's, a, that's um that's a must. I uh, I always go back and watch. I must have watched my last snowman's fight at least a thousand times to see what I was what what I would do if I was to fight myself. Uh, and also, my coach would do the same thing. So, uh, and uh, you know, we pick it apart. There's a couple mistakes we made, and uh, and uh, I think we, we you know we fixed them, and we're still working on them. And especially for the next couple of uh, the next couple I mean, the next night, I think we have like three weeks left. So like the next two weeks, we're gonna be uh, really uh, getting ready for like a little situation in a fight and fixing my mistakes as well. We're really going to be concentrating on that in the next two, uh, two weeks. And, uh, you know, of course, before you came to the UFC, you were part of CS MMA. You recently got inducted into their cage of honor. Uh, you know, when they give you that call and say, Hey, we want to do this. I mean, was it something like, wow, I'm amazed by this. Yeah, I definitely, you know, I was like, uh, they gave me a call. Pat Sullivan, Jimmy Burstfield, and my manager Tyson uh, hit me up and they listened, man. We want to bring you into the cage, uh, you to our cage of honor. And I was like, oh, of course. You know, uh, I really was and am a huge fan of CES. I, uh, when I first came up on the local scene, um, I was excited to go to a CES fight because I knew how the, their, uh, how professional they were, the, the production they, they, they could have had. And I just knew, like, this is the place I wanted to fight at the time when I was still an amateur. They didn't, they didn't do amateur uh, fights, so I was kind of like, I right. when I turned pro, I definitely want to um, fight for CES. It didn't, I didn't make my pro debut, but eventually, listen, I need to get on a CES card. And once I got on a CES card, it was, I said, like, oh, I only want to fight for CES. And um, I feel like you, you can see why. You know, they're uh, they're doing big things right now. They have the XSTV deal. They're, uh, they're all they just got into Massachusetts with with uh, a couple of fights now. They're all over from Foxwood, uh, Connecticut and, and Rhode Island. So they're, you know, they're doing big things, you know, you know, huge shout out to Pat Sullivan, Gene Burstow and the whole CS team. And of course, CES has got a card, uh, you know, coming up here in the next uh, month or two. Of course, uh, just had recently an opportunity to talk to Pat Sullivan. So be on the lookout for that. Rob, as always, man, I really appreciate time. Good luck in the fight. Uh, is, is there, I know the fans really don't have a reason to uh, have to get a sell on why they should watch this fight, but uh, is there is there any is it just simply you're just promising that you know what you know just uh, sit down and just enjoy the fight and don't blink? It's pretty much like this, man. When I get in there, I'm looking for knockouts. I'm looking for finishes. If uh, if you're looking for if you, if you're a fight fan, you love exciting fights and you you love knockouts, you have to turn into this fight. My fight especially, but this whole car is ridiculous. So it's going to be a huge car. It's going to be the whole car is going to be exciting, but especially my fight. You know, I'm, I'm in there to steal the show. I, I have opportunity to steal the show with so many legends, and I'm giving it all. So definitely, you know, tune into to this card, man. Rob, as always, appreciate your time. Good luck in the fight, man. Thank you so much, man.